Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Well, welcome, everybody, to the Command Zone. Da-da, How's it? Da-da. It's the Command Zone. The, it's the time where we talk about Commander. Then we sing about the Command Zone. <laughs> Burninating the countryside. The it was kind of like the Burninator. Yeah, All I, right. I, I clearly, we just went straight to it. Uh, I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Today, we are returning to the very popular, very much in demand, High Rollers episode. High Rollers. Is it in demand, or do we just like to think of ourselves as High Rollers? Oh, both. Both. I mean, clearly people have asked us about these cards before, um, and uh, we got influenced to do these episodes because we came back from Vegas and we were thinking about, you know, how we were such High Rollers. (laughs) Yeah, we were totally (laughs) High Rollers. We would, like, go around and literally take a cab like five miles out of the way to find the cheapest tables. Yeah. <laughs> That's how high roll as we were. Yeah, we were like, $5 minimum tables, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> the cabbie's like, That's like five miles away. Yeah. Take us there, Take my us man. there, please. Yes. And he's like, All right, no one even goes to that part of Vegas anymore. We're like, We don't care. We don't That's care. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... um uh, a couple of small things to announce before we get going. There is a new contest that we're currently doing right now. It's been going on for a little bit where we are giving away packs of The Dark. Sweet. Very Thank you, set. Alex. Yeah, Alexander Newman. You can find them at Alexander New M on Twitter or his articles on mtgbrodeals.com. He came to the meetup when we were in Vegas, and he had the Conspiracy Draft Pod where he contributed packs of The Dark for his entire table to draft. So lucky just everybody in there. I wasn't yeah. in that pod, The yeah. generosity there is just, it blows my mind, and it's just like, it's so awesome to have that happen. And he's continuing that generosity by giving some packs to you guys. That's right. So he gave us some packs uh, to give away of The Dark. This is a high value set. It's really hard to get these packs anymore. It's the fourth set ever released past Unlimited, right? Yep. You know what The Dark has? It's the very first version of Blood Moon. The very first. It's uh, like a $40 card. Uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I hate that card. Uh, so, Alex, thank you for uh, putting that into the world more for uh, Josh's sake. It makes me a very happy person. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Alex, I still love you, man, because you are very generous, and yeah, you're, definitely. You're, you're very generous to our listeners. This is how you enter. You can email us at commandcast at rocketjump.com or tweet at us a link to a deck list of yours that you are having trouble with, and you're going to make the deck list on tappedout.net. It's very simple. Basically... Tell us what your deck's trying to do, what it hasn't been doing, what it's been struggling with, what troubles you're having, and we're going to help you tune in. We are the Deck Doctors. Ooh, Deck Doctors. Ooh, with a dial sign at the end because we're high rollers, too. High rollers, Deck Doctors. <laughs> make a lot of money as these Deck yeah, Doctors. Yeah, we're going to make it rain. My, my medical degree. <laughs> we're, we're like the, the whitest... <laughs> Except we're not. Except white we're Asian. At all, yeah. yeah. Well, there's well, nothing more. That makes more... us better doctors, though, right? Oh, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Wow, we got really racist. What happened? <laughs> no, we just were abiding by the stereotypes. Here, right? <laughs> um, um, yeah. So, please go to Tapped Out and fill and and put your deck in there mm-hmm. and give us the URL in an email or a, or a tweet. Please don't just email us the entire list because. If you do that, then we're not going to choose you to win. I'm sorry. But yeah. it's just too hard to look at a deck and I have to know every single card by name. It's so much easier if I can mouse over it on tappedout.net. Yeah, absolutely. So, and again, we're going to choose the decks that are going to be interesting to talk about. If you send us a deck and it's just perfect, well, you're not going to get chosen because then we're not <laughs> going to be able to tell you anything. So yeah. make sure to send us those decks that you're working on. They're still works in progress. They need to be tuned. You're having trouble. You know, Maybe you built a deck and... There's a deck in your meta that's giving you problems. Then explain that to us, and mm-hmm. so we know the scenario. So, and yeah. then you can win a pack of the dark. Yeah, and the deck doesn't even need to be finished yet. You can you can be looking to cut cards as well. Don't give us like a 300 card deck, obviously, because that's not going to win either. But we're we're looking for decks in progress, and we're going to help you narrow down what you need to focus on. And in the episode, we're going to try and have some level up moments where we talk about you know we're going to work through the decision process, and hopefully yeah. you can learn a lot from that as well. All right, on to the main topic: high rollers. Ching, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, we haven't actually. I, I feel like I say it in my head every night. I'm like, bing, bing. every night before every I night go to bed. Before I go to bed, I go bing, and I just fall into dream, dreamy <laughs> With world. With a huge grin on my face. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about buying these expensive cards. That's oh why. yeah. Um. So, uh, the basic gist of it is, we've talked about cheap cards. We usually try to keep it under twenty five dollars when we talk about deck text and stuff because we want the decks that you're building to be accessible. Um. We're all, you know at different points of the game. We're all coming to this as newcomers, or we may have had old collections and stuff, but the whole point is we want 
everyone to play this game, and we want them to play it without ha- them, people having to go like, oh, we want, want it to be realistic. I can't, yeah, I can't afford that. Right. Um, and also, I think for the most part, this is the 99% of the decks out there for EDH. For sure. Uh, are definitely not high rolling. Yeah, maybe have a couple of cards in there. that The deck total could cost as, one, as much as one of the cards we're going to talk about today. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Easily. I have decks that cost way less than the cards we're going to talk about. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, Shadowborn Apostles. Yeah, exactly. That deck. <laughs> Although, Apostles are, they, they're like a dollar each. Which actually adds up. Really? You yeah. You could have bought an instead of all those apostles. That's that true. One card feel? instead of 31 cards. Just one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes me feel pretty good, actually. Oh, good. Um, we've talked about the. In episode 53, if you want to go back, we talked about the restricted list. I'm not going to go into it as in depth here. It's just a list of cards that Wizards has said they'll never reprint again. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, those are the cards that, in general, are better to buy if you're spending a lot of money because if they're never going to print them again, then the price fluctuation, uh, you're pretty safe there yeah. from an investment standpoint. Yeah. So, uh, well, you want to just jump in? Moats. Moats. 275 to $300 dollar, dollar bills in near mint condition. Now, and you can probably it, get one for like 200 if it's just beat up to all crap. But Oh, yeah. We should say the prices we're going to quote are near mint condition, for the English the, version of the card, for the English version, the cheapest version of the card at near mint, and those are the prices as of when we record this. So mm-hmm. you know, some people are going to yell at us. I'm sure a year from now, uh, <laughs> when, when yeah, they find like, this, we listen to your podcast and that's five hundred dollars, five hundred dollar card. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, how'd that it's happen? It's 2015, so take that yeah. into account. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's 2015. It is June, maybe July. Who knows? Okay, uh, uh, what does Moat do? Moat is an enchantment for two and two white. So uh, CMC four creatures without flying can't attack. This it's, is not a three hundred dollar card. Uh, it's extremely powerful. It is very powerful. Yeah, but this is again one card in the thousands of thousands of cards that have, have existed for Magic now, and I think there's a lot of cards that do what this card does for does cheaper. Says, yeah. uh, it's so expensive because it, it was only printed once in Legends, and the art sucks. That's also why it costs so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's on the restricted or uh, reserve list. Yeah. So it's will never be printed again. Um, yeah. So let's talk about some cards that do similar things. We've talked about the Megases before. Yeah. So the Megases are the reprints, quote unquote, of these same cards uh, in Future Sight or um, Planar Chaos, where they add Magus of the and then the keyword from the original card uh, that do essentially the same thing, but in creature format. So Magus of the Moat is two and two white for a zero three human wizard. The creatures without flying can't attack. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, it's way worse. Like we talked about, you can counterspell this, you can kill this. Uh, there's just a lot of easy way, easier ways to get rid of a creature than there are an enchantment. Uh, there's ways to get rid of creatures in every single color, uh, color but there yep. aren't ways to get rid of enchantments or lands. Uh, and lands are usually the most powerful um, uh, because they're very hard to interact with in yep. general. Um, but still, it does a really good approximation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Magus of the Moat is pretty much the same card. I would take this over Moat any day for much cheaper for that um, amount of money, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've got another one here. It's called Island Sanctuary. It's from around oh. the same time period. Uh, it's been reprinted more, though, because it's not on the reserve list. It's one and a white for an enchantment. It says, if you would draw a card during your draw step, instead, you may skip that draw. If you do, until your next turn, you can't be attacked except by creatures with flying and or island walk. Whoa, island walk. So, yeah, because it, <laughs> it, puts, it puts you on an island. So Yeah, I like that. Now... This thing does two things, and I actually like it better than Moat for a couple of reasons. One is you don't have to turn it on. So you can cast it and draw your card. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. you're just like, it's normal. And then when you do turn it on, it only affects you. So they can still attack each other. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite as like frustrating. You put Moat out, everyone's going to kill you, try to kill you just to get rid of Moat. Yeah. Because it, they can't attack each other. They sort of all have to team up against you. Whereas Island Sanctuary, you just turn it on when you really need it by not drawing cards mm-hmm. and then they can still hit each other, which could be to your advantage. So, right. Right. Uh, I, I like this card. If you need this type of effect, which not every deck does. Yeah. And I think the downside of not being able to draw a card that turn is not so bad when you in general, you have ways to draw cards in the format. And also it's like, Hey, you're facing down 30 flying damage in the air next turn. Would you rather not draw a card and not die? Exactly. So it gives you that flexibility to only do it when you need to. Yeah, and I'd like s- you said, if you have card draw from something else, then you don't care if you miss one, mm-hmm. you know, if you've got a, Consecrated Sphinx out, fine. Yeah, and I definitely would only play this card if you have lots of other ways to do card draw in your deck. Um, For sure. Because you still need to draw your answers to win the game if someone, you know, you need your Wrath of God. You know, in my five-color Nekusar deck, though, 
Mm -hmm. um, it might be just be really good because I just put it out and I still draw my card like normal. But as soon as I drop Neku Nekusar and a couple other things, then I stop drawing cards and it's just like, how are you going to get at me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. on the ground, clearly. Uh, no, you have to have Island Walk. Oh, that's right. Or Except flying. by Fleet. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, my bad. I read that wrong. Well, um, I like that a lot better. There's also Glacial Chasm, which yep. you use to great effect every time we play. I'm always like, I can't believe I'm losing to that card right now. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it's a cumulative upkeep where you pay two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put an age counter on the permanent, and you sacrifice it unless you pay its upkeep cost for each age counter on it. So you pay two life, then four life, then six life, yep. then eight life. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you sacrifice a land. Whatever. So a second downside. Yeah. Uh, creatures you control can't attack. So a third downside. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Oh, so a really big upside. Really big. All damage. Yep. We're talking pingers. Anything. We're talking burn. We're talking like pillory of the sleepless. The only thing they can get you is like Actually, loss of still. life. Yeah, loss of life. Was, yeah. yeah, and the example I just gave, which I thought was not, it's pillory of the sleepless, which yeah. is a modern master's card right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, super powerful. It does. It's better than mo in most instances, I would say, because mm -hmm. it's a land and it can't be countered. And if you really want to not be attacked, that'll do it. Yeah, and like this is commander. You're, not, you're the first turn you're losing two life. It's like great, could have been hit for ten. Second life yep. you're losing four life. Great, still could have been hit for ten. Yep. You know, so you're you're happy to put glacial chasm out. Um, especially if your deck can <laughs> not worry about you know attacking other people. If you your deck's to gonna people. win through some means that's not attacking, then glacial Cla chasm should absolutely be in there. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Moat worth it or not? Not worth it. Yeah, I say absolutely not worth it. Absolutely not worth it. Um, if you want the card for collector purposes, sure, because it's on the um uh, the uh the list yeah it's on the restrict or restrict reserve list. list reserve list but it's yeah i wouldn't i i don't even really want it the, uh, all those cards we talked about are, are better in some way mm -hmm. uh the next one is super mean craig has played this on us before yeah uh I, I used to own one i don't know if i still do it's called nether void it's three and a black for an enchantment it says whenever it's a world enchantment actually oh enchant world but it's been oracle to just enchantment oh really mine it, says world enchantment oh you're right it's on a Oh, it's formatted weird on my. You're right. <laughs> World enchantment, as Dang opposed it, gatherer, as opposed to those other enchantments that only affect the or that affect the universe. Ooh, we need universe some universe enchantment? enchantments. That'd yeah. be sweet. So it's a world enchantment. It says whenever a player casts a spell, counter it unless that player pays three. Jeez. So it just makes every single spell cost three more. Yeah, it's like a mana leak on top of every single card. It's insanity. It's super strong. It slows the game to this crazy grindy halt. Unless, and you're only playing this again in a deck where you do not care. Where so, either your stuff costs very little, or else you're you you're planning to get ahead on board and then just put this out and right. And stop everybody else. Right, because if you're if you're playing like the mono black deck and you have Crypt Ghast and all the guys that double your black mana, you just don't care about this. Yeah, you're just like, I can still play stuff because I have a million mana. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's super strong. Very good. It's about $175. I don't know if we said that, did we? Uh, I don't think we did. 175 bucks, but... Boom. It's also from Legends. It's also on the reserve list. Yeah. It has like the card art of a lot of Legends card do, which it looks like it was drawn on like charcoal. Yeah. It's pretty cool. sweet art. Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty sweet. Yeah, too. The, I, I like Legends does style. have some great art. Um, so it's really hard to find cards that simulate this effect, especially in black. Yeah. So you know, blue has these type of effects, but but black really doesn't. Uh, one I would say is Faraz's Ban. Mm -hmm. So it's six mana for an artifact. It says creature spells cost two more to play. So it's not the exact same. It's really not even that close. It's only creature spells, and it's two and not three. Mm -hmm. And it costs six mana to put out. But it is an artifact. It does a similar thing. Um, yeah, that's... I mean, it. I, I like, obviously, Nether Void because it's every Way better. Spell, it's way yeah. better. It's just... This is the one of the closer things I could find. There's also the big baddie himself, or I guess the small baddie, because it's a Kithkin, Gaddick Teague, uh, yep. which says non-creature spells with converted mana cost four greater can't be cast, it just, and non-creature spells with X in a mana cost can't be cast. So it's not even like they you pay three more. That's You, you just, just can't, can't cast them. Yeah. But creature spells, all of them, you can still play. Yeah. Gaddick, Gaddick Teague stop. is a meanie. Yeah. Um, he definitely will make no one like you at the table. But if in your meta you want to play Nether Void to stop things that... Uh, aren't creatures, mm -hmm. then Gaddock T can do a pretty good yeah. uh, impersonation. And then there's Sphere of Resistance, which is the two-drop Resistance. Artifact. Yeah, Resistance. Resistance. Viva la Sphere. Viva la Sphere. <laughs> Spells cost one more colorless to cast. So, and yeah, the flavor text, a sphere pushes equally in all directions. Ooh. 
good flavor. It's good flavor. Um, the Carlsberg has like again, a, it does it. It's not as powerful as Nether Void because it's it it only makes them cost one more. Yeah, but and there's things like Thalia and there's a whole bunch. Uh, Grand Arbiter. Right. I just don't think you'll ever see a card like. No, uh, that's as oppressive as this. It's way too oppressive, yeah. and it's super pushed. Like, so you, three more to cast? It's crazy. Even two would be a lot for four mana. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it's three is what... Uh, it's nuts. Yeah, it is nuts. Do you think it's worth it? I think this is one of the cards that's worth it. Yeah. I, but you need to have a deck that really can abuse it, right? Yes, I think so. And again, with the caveat that your deck is... Every other thing about it has been upgraded... Yeah. To the point where this is the only position that you have to improve it because everything else is the best card in its slot. Yeah. And would you play this in a deck you think that solely is about doing this to other players or is this just sort of like one of your finishers? Uh, I think the deck would have to be doing this type of thing. I, I don't think you could just throw it into any deck. And yeah. I mean, it, it if you just have them and it wasn't $175, then this is good in a lot of decks because like I said, you get ahead, mm -hmm. drop it, then you just... <laughs> make it so nobody can catch up to you but in general the price tag makes it mean like you specifically want this type of effect in this deck right and at a certain point um nether void just by itself doesn't make a difference right right the, there's as much of a difference it always does stuff where they can't play two things or something mm -hmm. you know but yeah there'll be points in the games where they can still play one thing so yeah uh this That's next one card. is oh, god and again our friend Craig Blanchett has played... <laughs> he has tons of Legends cards. Yeah, tons of Legends cards, and they, they've all been played against us because he has these awesome cards. This one is between 3 and 350, so it's uh, it's pretty spendy. Yeah, it, Chains. Uh, you want to say Mes Mephistopheles? I, I, was, I, I started looking at it. Chains, I was like, Chains of... Uh. Mephistopheles. <laughs> Oof. So this is a big one. Yeah, Chains of Mephistopheles is one and a black for an enchantment. This is not a world enchantment. Just a regular enchantment. It's, the chains can't wrap that Why? around the whole world. This is from the same set. They're both from Legends. Why is the last one a world and this one isn't? I have no idea. Um, yeah, because this is still enchanting It still everyone. affects everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it still has a really good point. They just willy-nilly were like, oh, Again, well. the chains can't wrap around the whole table. It's, like, just, it's just around let's one. Let's put world on this one. Well, why not this one? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Get out of here. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> okay. We didn't even hire you. <laughs> it's a two-man enchantment in black. It says... If a player would draw a card, except the first one he or she draws in his or her draw step each turn, that player discards a card instead. So just to recap, if you would draw a second card mm -hmm. any time in your turn uh, or any other turn, then you have to discard a card when you draw it. If the player discards a card this way, he or she draws a card. If the player doesn't discard a card this way, he or she puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. A lot of his and hers here. It's really confusing. What it basically does is stop a lot of extra card drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can also use it to like put stuff in your graveyard sometimes. But they sometimes. draw a card if they discard a card this way, right? Right. And then if they discard a card... Uh, if they don't do it, then they get then they just mill their top card. Right, exactly. So if you're just on a regular draw cycle, you draw your first card, and then you did not draw another card, I believe, so you, so you just mill. mill the top. But yeah. if you're drawing like off of a Consecrated Sphinx, you draw that extra card, you have to discard that one, and then you draw the next one. And then it's like a weird cycle yes. where you're forced to discard half the cards you draw, so you're still getting those extra draws, but you're forced to dump them into your graveyard. Yeah, it's super it's weird. It screws up like... I guess like Jason the Mind Sculptor brainstormy type stuff, maybe. Right, because uh, you have to dump stuff in. Fetchland stuff, Oracle of Maldaya stuff, uh, Corsair of Crufix type stuff where you're looking at the top card. Scry's probably messed up quite a bit. It just is a sort of a chaos havoc wreaker. There's probably some combos with it that I'm not thinking of right now. It also does uh, put stuff into your graveyard. So if your deck really mm -hmm. wants to do that, it's just free stuff into the graveyard sometimes. Um, but it's three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's so weird. It's just like I can't. For one, I can't think of a card that really combos with it. I'm reading online that Anvil of Bogardin is one of the few that, do, uh. that do. It says players have no maximum hand size, and at the beginning of each player's turn, that player draws an additional card, then discards a card. So I believe it does. I'm. Let's see. So you. Let's see. Okay. The first thing that happens here draws if you draw a card, then yep. the anvil's trigger is on the stack, which says draw a card, uh, draw, then discard. Draw and discard a card. 
Uh, and then that, when that resolves, you have to carry out the instructions of the Chains of Mephistopheles, which is to draw a card, uh, but it gets replaced by Chains. to draw. So the, the extra card you draw gets replaced by Chains saying something happens. Right. And then, I don't know. You draw a card. And then my brain triggers. explodes? You discard, draw, discard. I don't know. It It's not a lock. I don't know if there's combos. You guys need to tell us if you know something that works because my head's about to friggin' explode. We've just recorded a bunch of these podcasts in a row and I don't want to think about this anymore. Plus, I tried. I you, got like a third of the way there and I just quit. I was like just watching you like, you go, man. I have no idea you what go you're for saying. It, yeah, go for it, dude. I'm like looking at the Oracle text and like trying I'm to look I'm never going to buy this card and I hope I never see it in play because the text on it is super small too because of how much that had to fit on the yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> Because they used to be just like they didn't have a standardized text size like they do now. Like yeah. right now, they they will make the wording fit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they will they will reword it until it fits until at the font fits. size that they like. <laughs> but in the old days, they'd be like, I don't know, just make it a two point font and we'll fit it all yeah, on there. Just just figure it out. Yeah, somebody will read it with a micro with a, a <laughs> magnifying glass. So yeah, it's pretty bizarre. Um, yeah, this card's clearly not worth it. Just get Notion Thief. That card's way better. Um, well, yeah, the cards that. Our sort of cheaper versions are just stuff that sort of stop drawing, mm-hmm. stop other people from drawing cards or mess with drawings. And so, that feels like that's what you want to do with yeah. this card, which is like, hey, stop going off and drawing all those cards and putting us all way behind you. So Notion Thief is sort of similar. It makes it so anytime somebody would draw an extra cards, you draw them instead. Yeah, which is Be pretty careful cool. because if somebody gets a Consecrated Sphinx out on you, then you, they mill you out. Immediately, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth is a creature that just says players can only draw one card per turn basically mm-hmm. um that's similar spirit of the labyrinth yeah yeah it, it's similar it's not exactly what chains of Mep- mephistopheles is doing I feel like this is what you want though each player can't draw more than one card each turn yeah. that's that's what you want out of the i think like the this, chains right? put stuff in your graveyard is important um uh-huh. you know that's part of the the equation but anyway is it worth it jimmy yes just kidding it's totally not worth it, it. might be worth it just for the arguments that are gonna occur <laughs> Like every yeah, person has to do the this. You don't have the oracle text out. You just have this like, what the heck? So I do what now? Okay, I draw. <laughs> oh no, I discard that one. Wait, I mill. What? Then what? I draw it. Okay. It's like I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just right. gonna concede, and you guys figure it out. I'm gonna shuffle. See, up. you get auto wins. Yeah, that, there it is. It's totally worth it for 300 bucks. You get an auto win out of frustration. That's why you also play a. Uh, um, what's the one that makes everyone? Uh, shuffle their cards in and just start flipping them chaos warp or Cha- no not, uh, chaos not warp, chaos warp, uh, uh, warp world warp world yeah yeah <laughs> it's one of those just like oh man All right, I'm when, good. in vegas really quick story we were playing uh, a commander game and, and i'm playing next to jason alton and he's playing prosh and i look over and he's got warp world in his hand oh. and i'm like do it do it do it. he's like no man i'm like why do you have it in there if you're not gonna play it he goes well sometimes people just make me mad <laughs> <laughs> so then I hit the uh, the uh, the big red button. <laughs> I guess so. Warp World. That's right. really funny. This next one, I'm going to just say immediately, is worth it. It's very good. It's Mana Drain. Yep. It's blue, blue for an instant. Counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase. Add X to your mana pool where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Whoa! Talk uh, about one of the best counter spells Let's talk ever. price tag really quick. Oh, yeah. Between 200, 200 and $225. Cheaper than Chains of Mephistopheles for Which, some reason. <laughs> <laughs> they just price chains really high because they don't want people to play. just go buy this card right now. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Mana Drain, super strong. It's it's counterspell, and then it ramps you like crazy. Yeah. Um the fact that it's just a blue blue counterspell, which is what the original counterspell is, and probably the best and cheapest price you can pay for counterspell outside of like a and it just has pure world. upside over the best counterspell. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um still two hundred dollars is a lot. How often in EDH is somebody gonna play something at a point in which you those five or six extra mana really do something for you? I feel like it does. I feel like that 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 comes up more than you might think. But I, it depends I feel like on the part of the game that it's that it happens. See, I feel like you might as well just have plasma capture. Plasma capture, yeah. 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 So which does the same thing, basically just costs two more green. You have to be in those colors though. Yeah, you have to be in two colors. That's true. Um there's some other cards. There's drain power. Now drain power gets a little dicey because um, right, it's, they it's can a sorcery, tap their mana actually. in response. Yeah, this is one of the more iconic card arts. I remember seeing this a bunch as a kid. Yeah, it's um, got Storm from X Men on it. Target player activates a mana ability of each land here she controls, then put all mana from that player's mana pool into yours. Yeah, so you just force them to tap out and give you all their mana. Right. 
you but, can get a bunch of colored mana from that too. Yeah, but the problem is they can cast instants in response. Yeah. But if they don't have any instants, then you can just grab all their mana. Can't they also just tap out in response too? No, because they can't empty their mana pool. You get it. They have to spend oh, that mana. Oh, right, right, right. From that player's mana pool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they would need game. some way to spend it. So they need an instant or a sorcery. So it's tra- drain power is a little dicey, but it does a similar thing. Um, yeah. Piracy is another one. Piracy, actually, you can tap out in response. Um, Because I was like, oh, I love this card. It's too blue for uh, sorcery. Until end of turn, you may tap lands you don't control for mana. Spend this mana only to cast spells. So it's basically saying, hey, the entire table, you're forcing them all to tap out immediately or play any instants or sorceries. You're not stealing the mana from them. You're just tapping all their stuff. Unless they let you to, yeah. Yeah. Which Uh, could happen if you negotiate This is a political... Yes, exactly. So if you can become political... And sometimes you do where it's like one player's really powerful and you get the other two players to let you use their mana to do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I feel like it only ha- takes one time for you to just abuse them and be like, oh, I also went infinite and oh, I win the game. And they're they'll like, they'll never trust you, you again. You will never yeah. get my, you pirate. <laughs> and then Plasm Caster is the sort of exact, more or less copy of what Mana Drain does, but it mm-hmm. just costs two green also. Yeah. So but this card is green. really good. I yeah. would play this in any co- in any deck that has these colors. Yeah, I think just about any deck with these colors is playing it. It's, it's, it's good. Um, yeah, it's real good. That's the one that makes me think I wouldn't pay the 200 for mana drain because mm-hmm. even plasm capture there are times when it's just like eh, it's fine it just counters a spell yeah it's very in see in in legacy or in a normal constructed format like those extra like five mana mean that all of a sudden on your turn you have nine or ten mana yeah is like very often just you win but in in EDH, going from six mana to eleven mana doesn't just mean you win the next turn. Maybe it means you kill one player. Yeah, I mean sometimes it just means that you just get a how get ahead on board a lot more than everyone else because you're able to play like three things instead of two. But that also can just make you a bigger target. Yeah, exactly. Notably, also plasma capture does give you uh, the X mana for the converted mana cost in any combination of colors. That's true. So, so it, that is a big upside on plasma capture. Yeah, so it's actually colors. better, but it costs more <clears throat> mana. So yeah, um, I don't know, worth it. I think it's worth it. You may not, but I guess we should disagree eventually, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I would not spend two hundred dollars on this card. Um, it is a very you know good. What? It now is a very you, good now card. Now that you say that, I agree. I would not spend two hundred bucks. Yeah, it on is this a very card. good card. If it was, if it was five bucks, sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, the next one is a two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollar card. Jeez. So about the same price. It's called the Abyss. Or as we learned in Italian, Il Obiso. Il Obiso. Yeah, the Abyss is... Oh, do you Guess what? It? It's a world enchantment, Josh. Oh, thank God, <laughs> because it's so different than those other enchantments. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of his or her choice. It can't be regenerated. So Whoa. everybody has to. Everybody gets a creature destroyed every upkeep. Yeah. Each player's upkeep, and you get to choose. Right. right. Uh no, of that cre- of that player's choice, right? Oh right, right, right. yeah. Because the original text says all players bury one target non artifact creature under their control during their upkeep. Yeah, the oracle <laughs> says destroy. You get to pick one, but you destroy it. It's also destroyed, not sacrifice. So, mm-hmm. um, you could get around it with indestructible and Just things like that. To keep pointing it at. Yeah. yeah, but it's really oppressive and super powerful. This is one of those ones you see from time to time because it's very good in EDH, mm-hmm. which it just hoses the Rafik decks of the world, the, the Shu Yun decks of the world. Yeah, this it's card's really like, good in Shieldred. Yeah, the, Shieldred with the commander. actually just does this also. Yeah, um, so it's forcing them to get rid of two cards every single turn. It's cr- yeah, it's crazy. This is a very powerful card, but there are a lot of cards in the history of Magic that do what this card does. Mm-hmm. Shieldred, like you said. Uh, there's actually a Magus of the Abyss. yeah. Creature, human, wizard, um, I won't read all this text, but it's a 4-3 that says, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of his or her choice. It can't be regenerated. But the problem here is you can the Megas can kill itself. Oh, it right. will eventually have to kill itself. Yeah. So whereas the Abyss is an enchantment that does not ever, can't point it at itself. So right. if you have zero creatures, the Abyss is great. Megas of the Abyss is less great if you only have one creature. In yeah, it. yeah. So there's also Anawan, the Ruin Sage, who I kind of want to build a commander deck around now. That I see this. <laughs> uh, a tribal one finally. Uh, three and two black for a four three legendary creature vampire shaman. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non vampire creature. Yeah, so that one's pretty good and very similar. It doesn't do it on each of their upkeeps. It does it yeah. on your upkeep, which can be good and it can be bad depending. Um, 
I think that's a very similar effect, though. Mm -hmm. And it won't kill itself because it's a vampire, so. Yay! And the one's always sticking around, him and his blue skin. So um, for, for 200 to $250, what do you think of the Abyss? I think if you really... It's, it's the card that it's like, it needs to be the 99th card in your deck that makes it that much better because black has this sort of edict effect everywhere. Yeah. You know, I would rather just play a Merciless Executioner and just make everyone sack a creature instead of waiting till their upkeep for them to do it. The can't be regenerated bit is nice, but I find that that, that really rarely doesn't come comes up. up. Yeah, people aren't worried about regenerating their creatures so much in EDH. They're they're it happens once in a while, but yeah, you're right. It's yeah. rare. They're usually persisting they're it, countering, or persisting more it, more testing yeah, flickering it, or it, whatever, just doing yeah. something else that's more silly and broken. It ju it does put the full on breaks on to those Voltron decks though, um, like nothing else quite does. I I yeah. think that you're right though. If 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 you if you had a deck and it had this effect in every other way and but there's no other way for you to improve the deck then maybe that's when you go to the abyss in general mm -hmm. i think you can get this for a lot cheaper and a lot of cards will do 80 percent of what this card does yeah all right the next one is 200 dollars to 225 it's gonna sound nuts jism Jin. jizam Jin. jizam Jin. Uh, it is, this is one of those, like, iconic magic arts as well, yep. like him and Demonic Tutor. He was on, the, I think, one of the boxes for Arabian Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a two and two black, four drop creature djinn. Uh, it's a five five. So, that's really big for back in the day, four mana, five five. At the beginning of your upkeep, Jazam djinn deals one damage to you. It's just a really good limited card is what it is. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, in the day... It was super powerful. Right. A 5-5 five, five for 4 mana was just a and house. And look how big he is. He's holding up this little human in the art. Yeah. It was just a house. Now we've got creatures that cost less mana that are just as big and have upsides rather than downsides. Yeah. So there's, um, I mean, do we, there's there's like. Abyssal ab Persecutor, yeah. I think is great. It's a same mana cost for a 6-6 six, six flying trample flample. And it says you can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. And this, it's black. So what you do is you just hit them until they're at one, and then you sack you this sack guy. It, yeah, and you're like, ooh, I win. Beat them or you just take them until they're at zero, because they can't lose the game, and then you sack it. Right, right. Um, I mean, like, the, the, the problem with this card is that the gen is that it's just a, just a creature. It's just a 5-5 five, five for four. And there's thousands of other cards that you'd rather have in its place. There's, like, Leatherback Bayloth is, like, green, green, green for a 4-5. That's it, no downside. <laughs> It's better. <laughs> yeah, it's just one mana less for one less power. It's, Wait, this card's great. Would you play this a lot in World Wake? Uh, I didn't play in World oh, Wake. Oh, you didn't play World Wake, right? Yeah. You, you drafted after that. Yeah, but, I mean, this card is good and limited. Again, not that great in our format. It's just you just don't beat people by hitting them in the face with a ground creature for four or five. Yeah, if Jazam Jin had flying and a bunch of other stuff, maybe this it would be, like, not... It's still nowhere near worth it. It's just no. because this card is... Uh, iconic and it's been printed once that's yeah that's it's really on the wild. reserve list it's this is maybe the first card we've talked about that's price is purely from collector standpoint mm -hmm. yeah um is it worth oh, it josh no absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not the next one this is a big one the next one is a 150 dollar card Ooh, we're getting into the realm of We've been for a while in the realm of absolutely crazy prices, but this is we're starting to get down there into where some of these Which cards... Which is crazy, because this card is significantly better than the, the last yeah, couple it we is. talked about. Um, it is Gaia's Cradle. Mm. It's a land, legendary land. We've it, talked about this on the show a couple yep, of times, too. Uh, you tap it, and you add green to your mana pool for each creature you control. Wow. I mean, it's busted. Yeah, it's super busted. I'm surprised this isn't banned in the format. I'm pretty surprised it's not banned. It's so much like Rafelos or those other type of cards that are banned. Um, and it's a land. It's not even a creature. Yeah. Uh, if this was a card that was more readily available, I guarantee it would be banned. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably because it's rare enough that it's just there's not going to be a large outcry about how powerful this card is because people aren't going to come in contact with it very often. Yeah. So it's... It's awesome. There's not a lot to say about it. Um, the cheaper versions, I think Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, mm -hmm. from the recent Theros set, which basically you tap and you get... You pay mana, you tap it, and then you get mana equal to your devotion to whatever color you named. Yep. Uh, Cabal Coffers is a very similar one that just doubles the amount of what uh, swamps you have. Swamps you control, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Sarah's Sanctum, you tap it and you get as much white mana as you have enchantments, I think. Is that right? Yeah. And white's the enchantment color. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's like the reason that Guy's Cradle is so good is because it's really easy to get a lot of creatures out. Sarah's yeah. Sanctum, it's not like, I'm going to cast 50 enchantments and get 50 mana it's off It's true. This. You don't have the raise the alarm that makes two enchantments, <laughs> right? You have, But you have tons of cards that do what raise the alarm. You know, you have, I'm looking for that card. You don't have triplicate someday. enchantments. You have triplicate yeah. spirits. Like, that's... Yeah, Gaia's, or Gaia's Cradle is... Uh, it's crazy. Do you think it's worth it? Yes. Yeah. I think it's worth it because it is a land that when you play it in the right archetype, any kind of token deck, even any deck that just makes four or five creatures, it you're just getting so much mana off of one card. Yeah. So I, I like it. I'm a big fan. I don't own one. I'd like to own one. Yeah, this is high on my list of these expensive cards that I would go purchase. The because, one that you'd actually buy, yeah. Yeah, here. I think Mana Crypt is probably just, just above it, and that's only because this only grows in green decks, mm -hmm. whereas Mana Crypt goes in any deck. Yeah, it's a but, little more linear with yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh boy. Invoke Prejudice. Another Craig special. Yeah, Craig Craig I, I have I have one of these. Oh really? Yeah. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. Um it's blue, 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 blue. So four so blue. You're not playing this if you're not heavy in the blue. You're not just gonna splash this casually. It's also deck. $120, so yeah. you're not <laughs> <laughs> uh it's an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell that doesn't share a color with a creature you control, you if you have by the way zero creatures on the board, this is every creature they cast. Yep. Counter that spell unless that player plays X or X is his converted mana cost. It doubles the cost of every single creature if it if you don't have a card that's the same color. Oh, it's called Invoke Prejudice, by the oh, way. Oh right, yeah, sorry. I didn't has say these that. sweet uh, KKK dudes on it. Yeah, the art. this is bizarre. This the art, art is, is I mean, and it, it, it's about the most unblue art ever, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> also, the effect is very unblue, except for the counter the spell part. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so every creature costs double the price unless it happens to share a, a color with a creature that the person ha that has his enchantment has. It's like super confusing, but most of the time you play yeah. this and you have no creatures or you only have like artifact creatures. Yeah, exactly. You're playing this in the control heavy deck and, yeah. and this card is just nutty. Um, it is, what was the other card we were talking about that was kind of like this? It Nether was, Void. Um, Nether Void, yeah. Yeah, but it's the blue Nether Void. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. Um. It's harder to cast because it's very prejudiced, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's harder to cast because it's four blue mana, but it's super powerful. It wants a very specific deck, though. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but when it lands, it is a it is a house. I mean, this thing just sh this stops the game almost entirely. Oh well, all creature shenanigans are just sort of not going to happen mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's talk about some cheap versions. The Faraz's Band from before or. or Faraz's ban from before right. is again similar because this is similar to Nether Void. So, yeah. Uh, also, one of your favorite cards, Humility, uh, which is an enchantment. All creatures lose all abilities, not base power and toughness one one. Yeah. So it Invoke Prejudice is basically looking to just stop creatures from happening, and Humility is doing a similar thing on a slightly different axis. Humility affects creatures that are already in play mm -hmm. and the ones coming into play. So it's similar. It's not the exact same. Yeah, it's definitely not the exact same, but man, it is a good card uh, if you are playing these colors and, and want this kind of effect. So what do you think? Invoke Prejudice? Worth it? I just don't have any decks that would run it, so to me, no. Yeah, I think if I had... And this is also the kind of card that when you play it, it's like, it's n you're not really making friends when oh, you Oh no, this people card, will hate this, know? just like Nether Void. Yeah, they, they will hate they'll it. They'll definitely hate it. I think if you have a deck that wants this effect where it just doesn't want to play creatures at all mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have a lot so that it's always going to be active, then it's probably worth it. It's a really, in blue, it's just a tough effect to get another replacement for. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I, I'd say yes, it's worth it. It, 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 yeah, but it's, pos to, it's you, possible that it's worth it's it. It's possible that's worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, two more cards left. We may as well just say one of the most famous cards. This is probably the one that people think of immediately when they first start. Um, when we talk about expensive cards. Uh, yeah, this is one of those cards that's absolutely necessary if you want to play Legacy, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and the whole format of Legacy revolves around this card. Yep. And it is Force of Will. <laughs> Between Forcing it's about a hundred, one hundred and twenty dollars near mint uh, right Therese now. Therese Nielsen's most famous art by far. Sick art, yeah, super sick. Um, it's three and two blue for an instant. 
uh, that does just say counter target spell. So it's kind of crappy just by looking at that. But the reason that this is played in the Legacy is because you may pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay Force of Will's mana cost. So you essentially get a free counter spell for one life and a card exiled from your hand that's blue. But in a, in a format like, like Legacy where turn one, if you're on the draw and your opponent does something that will essentially that essentially says like, look, I'm going to win the game because of this. Uh, you have to have a, a counter for it. And this is the best way to have a, a reliable zero mana counter spell in your hand. Yeah, it, it keeps the format in check. It single-handedly handed, yeah. stops zero turn kills and makes it so that if you're playing a deck that's going for a zero turn kill, this card can totally hose you. Mm-hmm. So that's just a check and balance on the entire format. Yep. Um, it's very good. It's really good in our format, too, because there's just so many times where you don't have any mana available, and they try and do the thing that's going to win the game. They cast their Insurrection. Yep. And is you, Pact of Negation good in our format? Uh, yeah, Pact, yeah. Pact of Negation is also very good. Yeah, Pact of Negation is one of the cheaper versions. Swan Song, I'm always talking about. It's one mana, so it's not the exact same. Yeah, but, and it's Sorceries and Instance only. Right, but usually Sorceries, Instance, uh, it's Enchantments also. Oh, um, right, right. Usually sorceries and instants are the things that are just going to kill you out of nowhere. It's pretty rare that a creature is going to do it, although there are your Crater of Behemoths. Yeah, Kiki Jikis. Yep. Um, and the last one I would say is Misdirection. Yeah. It's similar in that you can discard a blue card from your hand rather than pay its mana cost, mm-hmm. and it alters the target of a spell. So you can sort of snag their spell and point it at something else. Yeah, that's very powerful indeed. Yeah. Um, and, and, it- and the card advantage that you lose uh, is not often a huge deal in our format because you can just play another card that draws you seven cards or something so yeah 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 you're, you're gonna have a card hopefully in your hand that you will not i mean like and also you're usually instead of paying the full mana cost you you're doing this if it really needs it and it's worth it yeah and you're almost, rarely going to do it if it's not something that's going to kill you or make it so it's really hard for you to yeah, win and if so. it's not your turn and you're getting rid of a card in your hand that you're not going to be able to play anyway if you do lose the game or whatever happens just forces you to like make that card you know like you're much rather you'd much rather ditch that card than lose the game moment than lose the game or yeah. just have something happen where it's so hard to recover from it yeah good point uh, our last card is this it this is it for now. This is numero 10 on our second uh, high rollers episode. It's a card that I want to buy. Oh, wait. Is Force of Will worth it? Oh, um, yeah, I think so. The thing about Force of Will, although I w- Force of Will is not on the re- uh, reserve list. Oh, really? Um, so they may reprint. Actually, I could totally see them reprinting this card because they're not. I Here's what I think they don't want to keep people playing Legacy. Mm-hmm. They're never going to come out and say that, but they created the modern format. So that it can be their legacy that they actually have some control over and they can reprint the cards in it. Right. So printing Force of Wills creates more legacy players. Interesting. They don't want to create more legacy players because they can't reprint the dual lands and all the other cards in legacy. Mm -hmm. So I think that you're safe, even though Force of Wills is not on the reserve list, that I doubt they would reprint it. Yeah, they've just had judge promos and stuff for them. Yeah, I mean, they might. They might. I'm not saying 100%. I just feel like at this point in time, it's it'd be pretty uh, unlikely. Uh, yeah, it'd be pretty unlikely. Yeah. All right. So I agree with you. I think Force of Will is potentially worth it. You can always sell it. You can. There's just there's yeah. always going to be a demand for Force of Will. I mean, a lot. I think of, that's another card that, like you said, it's just not going to keep going up in price. If if, yeah. if your reasoning is sound, then I think it, that does make a lot of sense. Modern is modern and standard are the two formats that Wizards wants people to really be in because they can control the price points. And if people start complaining that Force of Wills cost too much, that's not their problem because that's not a format that they're supporting. Yeah, and like I don't know what the percentage numbers are, but I don't think a higher percentage of Magic players actually play Legacy. No, they can't. I mean, there's just not enough cards in existence. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually impossible. Yeah. Um, our final card would be the one and only Imperial Recruiter. Two in a red, Creature Human Advisor. When Imperial Recruiter enters the battlefield, search your library for a creature card with power two or less, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This is a very interesting tutor because it looks for a creature with power two or less. Usually it's converted mana cost or some other yep. restriction. Um, this card is anywhere from two hundred eight to three hundred dollars near mint. Well, because red is bad at tutoring and yep. it's in mono red, it works really well. It can go get stuff like, I don't know, Kiki Jiki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it can also go get stuff like Sarah Ascendant. Oh, right. Um, so it's just yeah, it's super strong. It's totally broken. Um, and then you can do Cool stuff like Flicker It. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's a creature that tutors is very powerful. Yeah, it's a great card, but it was only in uh, Portal 3. 
Yeah, so, it's been. I think there's a judge promo for this. Oh, as there well. was. You're right. Yeah. Um, but in general, like, like what else does Red have to tutor with? It's got Gamble. That's um, basically it. Besides the new Sarkin one that only finds a dragon. Yeah, I mean, back in the day when Kikijiki could get tucked into your deck, this was a card that I looked at for a long time because I was like, well, people keep tucking Kikijiki, yeah. and this is one of the few ways I can really get them out. Um, reliably and into my hand because a lot of the goblin tutors will do it as well but you just want as many of this uh, kind of effect as possible yeah it's probably not quite as good now after the tuck rule change but it's still really powerful tutors are just the most powerful thing in our format yeah um the big thing is just the power two or less three hundred dollars though yeah it's not worth three hundred dollars i really like the art though and i really like all the p3k cards because yeah. it speaks to me as an asian i guess i think three months ago it's more worth it, but the tuck rule really changed it, and now I don't think you need it. It's not necessary, even in mono red. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not going to make your deck so incredibly powerful for $300. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, it's true. You're like, but I still want it, I man. I still want it, yeah. <laughs> I, I just love the idea that it's two or less, and there's so many creatures that are like one twos or whatever that yeah. are the, the key piece to a combo or whatever, and you can't search them out otherwise if, you don't have, if you're not in black or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to pay a bunch of mana. Yeah, you could go find Pestermite with it if you already had Kiki. Yeah, that's you right. Could, you know, right. you can do some stuff. Yeah, you it's can definitely, do some definitely stuff. good. All right, so that's it for our uh, 10 cards for today for this High Rollers episode. Uh, let us know if you think we missed anything. Clearly, there are a lot more cards out there between 50 and and $100 that we didn't talk about. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely delve into. And there's still so, a few more over 100 that we haven't talked about. Um, there's actually not that many cards $100 or over that are legal in our format. I mean, mm -hmm. we've gone through 20 with the other episode. There's a few, but there's not a lot more than that. Um, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty great, actually. I mean, there's stuff like Tarmogoyf, but it's not good in our format. So. Yeah, definitely not good in our format, yeah. and we've talked about that. So maybe we'll call the episode when we talk about cheaper cards like, I don't know, medium rollers? Me no, it'll still high rollers. High I think rollers. anything above 50 bucks is a high rolling card yeah, in general. I agree with that. Um, also, if you can explain to us how Chains of Mephistopheles actually works, <laughs> go ahead. Please go do. Ahead. And don't forget, we have our contest. Uh, it, it, go back to the list at the beginning of the episode if you want to find out exactly how to enter. Uh, but basically, we're helping you. We're, we're the Doc Dectas. Doc Dectas? Deck, deck doctors. Deck doctors. Ooh, it's been a long night. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, send in some of those deck lists, and you could win a sweet pack of the dark courtesy of one of our viewers, Alex Newman. Thanks, buddy. Sweet. All right, let's Time move on the to the end step. step. Yeah, my end step this time is a game that I just got back into. I played it a lot when it first came out. Uh, and then sort of fell out of it because it just no one. It was just me and Matt playing it, and this happened with a lot of games. Like me and Matt would play tons of these games and buy, buy them, <laughs> and then and no one else would play. And no one else would play them because they would look at them and be like, "This looks too complicated." But this is actually a Star Wars miniatures game. Oh, this does look cool. I want to try X Wing, it. and it's basically um, you set up a board, a giant play mat, and you can choose rebels, scum like bounty hunters, or uh, Imperials. And you get to make a, an army out of 100 points, and you can essentially create your own epic space battles. So if you wanted to, you could have Wedge Antilles with Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Actually, that might cost too many points. But you could have something like that against like Darth Vader. They have Vader. cool little model things, too, Yeah, right? the models are all to scale to each other, and mm -hmm. they all look amazing. You can fly pretty much every single vehicle now in the Star Wars universe, because they've gone to the extended universe now. Um, but you could have like you can have a squad of like five B wings, just straight up five regular B wings flying against um, like one of the Lambda class shuttles on the Imperial side, or against Boba Fett, you know. And uh, Ooh, it's really one. cool. It's super customizable. There's tons of strategy, and you essentially take a, a series of turns where you both declare uh, without revealing to the other person. You both figure out what movement you want to do, like straight for two, or like a slight left or whatever, and you all do it across this board. And then you try and get in range with each other, and you're slowly playing out a star battle. A dog fight. It's really sweet. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think they sell the game at Target if you just want to buy like the beginner set. It's like 30 bucks. But it is one of the most fun experiences I've had. And the best thing to do is just you play the soundtrack. Yeah, as you're playing movies, it, as for you're sure. Playing it. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, do you play Imperial, Rebel, or Scum? Uh, it changes every time because everyone's always trying to try new stuff, but I found myself playing Imperial more than anything else. I would have to go Imperial too. Yeah. I mean, it's just so much fun to, to I love the design of like, uh, Darth Vader's X, uh, TIE fighter. Sorry. Yeah. And I love the Lambda. All their stuff looks stuff. sweet. The Imperial stuff just looks sweet. Yeah. But flying the Millennium Falcon around, I mean, that's well, kind well, of dreamy. True. And it's this giant model in the middle of this thing. And it's <laughs> super, all the, that's the other thing. The models are really well done. They're all detailed and painted really well and they look amazing. Oh, you don't paint them? They're no, already painted? Them. Oh, nice. Uh, 
um, yeah, because that'd be so oh, much Oh, good, because I don't want to have to paint a bunch of models, yeah. Yeah, but they recently came out with the uh, Scum or Scum and Villainy sort of packs where mm-hmm. you can be a bounty hunter now, and so one of Matt's new uh, builds is he just has two of ig eighty eight ships, uh-huh. and they're just loaded to the max, and they, like, both, like, they're kind of like magic cards where they, they, they synergize with each other. They both mm-hmm. give each other their own abilities because they're all, I guess, robots, and it's just, like, you just fly around, and you just feel so powerful, and it's really fun. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, Sounds it's fun. Really cool. Yeah. So you guys should check it out if you haven't had a chance to. If you guys like that kind of miniature kind of game too, it's a little more slow paced. So it sounds like a cross between Magic and like Warhammer. Yeah, it's definitely got Warhammer elements and stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun building up your army and stuff. All right, cleanup step. Um, on our sheet we wrote GP Vegas, come gather, but that's that's in the past. That's already happened. <laughs> you can tell we copy and paste a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, be sure to listen to our sister podcast, The Masters of Modern. Yep, we've talked about some cards here, and we've talked about modern a lot. Um, none of the cards we talked about are really modern playable, though, right? Because we're all... getting close to where the modern cards will fall, like the Goyfs and the uh, well, uh-huh. a lot of that stuff's banned in modern, like Jace and stuff. But yeah, yeah, but they'll get into the high roller stuff soon as well. Oh yeah, we didn't mention Jace the Mind Sculptor. We will. He's below a hundred now, so yeah, worth the price though. I'll say that much. <laughs> that card's amazing. Um, yeah, check out the Masters of Modern the, at the MM Cast on Twitter. Uh, Alex Kessler, Ben Bateman, happy belated birthday, Ben. They're both really good at what they do. They know. The show has really hit its stride recently, and they're they're, they're really. They've had good. some great guests, and, I, and they lined up a bunch of awesome guests bunch. when they were at the GP. Like yeah. they were listening off. We got this guy and this guy and this guy, so it's gonna be sweet coming up. Yeah, really sweet. Um, our editor for the show, Eli Cuevas. Thanks, buddy, for editing the video and the audio segments. And also a big shout out to Jeffrey Palmer, who has provided us with some of the new animations in our videos. If you guys haven't checked those out, we have a YouTube channel. You can subscribe by clicking on the link in the show notes below. He's at Living Cards MTG on Twitter. I think that's it. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And don't buy too many expensive cards. See ya. (laughs) Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. (laughs)